We have what appears to just be a beautiful rainy day on our hands, so what's a better thing to do on a beautiful rainy day than put wiring back into the Subaru? So, as you guys saw in the last video, we took the old wiring harness out, it's now time to put the new one in and try to ensure that we plug everything in to where it goes. There's a lot of electrical stuff that goes inside of this car and figuring out harness mapping is going to be a little bit of a pain, but we can do it. So here on the left side, we have our new harness from a 2016 STI Limited. There is the harness out of my 2017 STI Limited. Had to make sure I've got limited harnesses because the harnesses do differ a little bit, I believe. So um, they're both limited harnesses. Now, here's where the fun stuff starts is I have to figure out how this thing lays out inside of the car because honestly I have absolutely no idea. Luckily we have the whole garage to ourselves today um, so space shouldn't be too much of an issue in here. Um, this is definitely not going to be fun. Doing harness stuff like this is never a good time but we have no choice to do it. I'm gonna by the end of this video we're gonna find out if this harness if that harness I should say was our problem or not uh, because we're gonna get this thing fully installed whether it it's probably gonna be a today and a tomorrow thing for me which will all be one video for you guys but uh, let me just hop in the car start figuring out the routing for this so that way we can just try to get through this because this part this sucks like this sucks <laughs> So while it looks like a mess right now, mainly because it still is, uh, we're making progress. So the harness fits a lot better than my old harness did up along the firewall, uh, mainly because I haven't sabotaged this one like I sabotaged my old one. So I've got the majority of like dash forward kind of worked out. I haven't hooked anything up yet. I need to repin this connector, but I'm not gonna do that until I have the, is this one actually broken yet? Yeah, is actually broken. I have a new one of these. Well, I, I can pull the old one off my old harness and uh, repin it. So I'm gonna do that later. Um, but this portion of the harness is pulled up and through the fender. Same with everything over here. It's kind of just sitting in a pile right now. And we'll tackle this once we get the rest of the harness mapping kind of laid out. Uh, I've got all of the connections coming through the firewall where they need to, even the old engine harness, which I'll probably push back through here in a little bit, but I wanna make sure I have everything mapped out and plugged in for the most part before doing that. Now I think it is time to jump over here to where we start running the wires towards the back of the car, which will be a blast. That's going to be so much fun. So uh, let me clear out the back seat and let's start running the rest of this mess. Okay, so we're in a good news, bad news situation here. Good news is the new harness is going in as it should. The bad news is there's a little bit of differences. So after doing a quick Google, I should have looked at part numbers before I bought this harness, but it's whatever. I have a feeling it's still going to work. The 2015 and 2016 chassis harness, same, same. 2017 and up, different, different. The SRS module connector is entirely different. So I feel like if I get an SRS module made for a 2016 STI and plug that in, it'll still communicate with the ECU and be able to understand. I don't think there's any differences or changes in the ECU that would regulate SRS module to talk differently to the CAN system. The CAN system may still work for the functionality that we're shooting for, for the car, without it plugged in. I'm not 100% sure on that one yet. We're gonna find out here soon, um, but the plugs themselves are entirely different. So the passenger side of the harness is up into the trunk area. It follows where it followed stock. Comes up here like it does stock, jets across, goes up, um, comes up here, and then it's gonna sit in that little cubby right there. This is all for the seats. I'm just gonna kinda tuck that away because we're not using that. This connector here does not match this. So this is from the 2017. This is from a 2016. The connector on here is smaller than what it is on 
on that SRS module. I don't think that's going to inhibit or prohibit us from what we're trying to achieve here. All we're trying to achieve here with this swap is to retain as much of the OEM functionality as we can. I don't care if there's random lights on the dashboard or anything like that. We have a digital dash from Haltech that we're using in the car, so it's gonna cover it up anyways. With this though, as long as the push button start works to turn the car into accessory mode and turn it off from accessory mode and have all like the OEM functionality of like the radio and everything like that, that's all I'm shooting for. The Haltech is going to communicate with everything else and control everything else. So hopefully it still will. I'm going to jump over to the driver's side now and start running all of that wiring so it looks somewhat similar to over here so it's not just a wired mess everywhere. And then from there we'll move back into the trunk area and keep going. Okay, this time I actually do have to stop for the rain even though I'm working with the garage door shut. Um, but let me show you guys the progress and actually let me show you why I have to stop. So we pretty much have the entire harness laid out where it's going. All we have left is the engine bay, plug everything in, test it and make sure it all works which is going to be the scary part. So the entire harness, it really wasn't as bad as I thought laying this harness out. Um, I didn't really reference any of the pictures I took because the harness really only routes one or two directions it's really hard to mess up where it goes. The big thing for me is that SRS module down there. I don't know how that's gonna throw off our ECU, but we're gonna find out tomorrow morning uh, once we get the rest of this wiring put in here. Up here in the engine bay, not too much. All we have left to do is get all of these wires in the engine bay to their respective homes, get the cowl back on, the windshield wipers, uh, get a battery in here and test the electrical system. Now, the reason I have to stop tonight uh, is I have to stop the great flood from continuing to go into the house any more than it already is. So uh, let me take care of the great flood and I'll see you guys in the morning. So that way we can test the electrical system on blue here to make sure that it's working. So we're one moon cycle later, it's the next day. So I'm gonna get going on the engine bay first to start knocking out a lot of this wiring. Once we're done up in the engine bay, I think we're gonna go to the back of the car. We have to go under it to do the rear diff temperature sensor plug and the auto leveling headlight plug. After both of those are done, we can jump in the car and start getting in all of our temporary stuff uh, like the ECU, the BIU, the fuse box, the fuse panel, all that stuff to test the car to make sure it works. If it all works, we're gonna get the dash bar back in. We're probably going to get a lot of this stuff permanently installed for the last time. We're gonna get the Haltech wiring ran back through the firewall and all sorts of stuff. It'll be fun, it'll be a great day. I have a very confident feeling that all of this is going to work. Hopefully, should work. I think it's been like two and a half hours or three hours since I last updated you guys just going through time lapses. The fuse box absolutely kicked my ass, but I figured out how to get that back together. Um, the main portion of the chassis wiring is back in and plugged in at this point. Right now I'm working on the media display stuff, um, like the, the radio, all the communication, more can communication stuff. I don't think people realize how long this actually takes. There's a couple things I've noticed. There are some connectors that are different between the 16 and 17 STI harnesses. So I may have to 
pull off the connectors and repin them onto my old connectors to be able to plug them back in to be able to make everything communicate and function properly. I don't 100% know yet before I go to put everything back permanently. I'm gonna try testing things here and there just to see if we have the functionality that we want. Um, ideally, if we could have everything plugged in, that would be like golden. But let me show you guys kind of where we're at right now. It's just this stuff, this mentally drains you. I don't think in this video that we're gonna get to be able to testing out the harness. I would like to. Maybe I'll make this a three day video and just post late tomorrow. I don't know. This, t this literally takes so long to do like it's ridiculous this is probably one of the most mentally draining things i've ever done so for the most part getting the harness back in isn't as bad as you'd think the harness naturally wants to go to certain areas and when you have the crash bar back in it naturally wants to line up with some of the pop clips that are already on the harness so it's pretty easy to get everything back where it should be the problem i'm running into is figuring out what connectors go where because some of the connectors are different like on my old harness right here, this is one of the connectors that is different. So I, I don't know why the connector style is just slightly, slightly different in size. So that's what I'm fighting right now is getting the connectors to pretty much go back in their homes and go where they wanna go, where they naturally wanna go because we don't wanna force anything where it doesn't want to go. So this is my life, this is my life. So let me get back to wiring some more and hopefully we can get some more progress and hopefully get this thing tested out today because that is my goal. Hopefully, hopefully we can achieve that goal. Hopefully we can make that. Okay, it's late, and I think I have enough hooked up and plugged into where we can test this. Actually, maybe I should plug the steering wheel back. No, the clock spring's plugged in, it'll be fine. Let me put the, let me plug the battery up to this and uh, let's see what the fuck happens. Hopefully it doesn't explode or catch on fire. That is my goal here. Oh, fuck, stop, stop. Oh my God. Okay, everything just automatically turned on again. It's very angry. What happens if I push the button? Access key not detected. It's right here. It's right here. Okay, so. Okay, we have more features. Access key disabled. To start, check owner's manual. We're, we're not trying to start quite yet. Rear diff temp, I know. There's shit that's not plugged in, so it's probably freaking out about the stuff that's not plugged in. Oh. I don't, I don't know if this is progress. I actually have no idea if this is progress or not. It's not detecting the access key now. I'm so over this, you guys. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do it anymore. It's very upset. It says all doors are open. All the doors are open. Actually, what happens if I close this one? Well, it has detected that I closed a door, which I guess is progress. I'm stopping for the night. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this video going or if I'm gonna end it here. So I'm gonna leave that open for interpretation and we'll find out here shortly. It's just this wiring, it just beats the hell out of you mentally. Like it just like pummels you to shit and it sucks. So I'm gonna take a break for a little bit uh, and we'll see if I decide to keep going in the morning or if I decide to end the video, we'll find out. All right, it's the next morning. I've been plugging away on the STI for like two hours now. No updates, no progress, no changes. The key isn't being detected by the car, which makes me think the immobilizer is now stopping us for some reason. Um, it's just such a pain in the ass with this thing. Like, I just want to push it into a corner and forget about it, set it on fire, push it off a cliff at this point. It's so demotivating to work on this thing when there's just so many little stupid problems that are just keeping me from like progressing with the build. Now there's two options for what I see here. 
A, I could buy a brand new bulkhead harness from Subaru, put that one in, and I have a feeling that one would resolve all the issues because A, it's for a 2017 and not a 2016, so the harness changes won't be that big of an issue. Um, B, we could go full race car and just put everything on a switch panel, but that completely defeats the purpose of why I wanted to build this car in the first place because I wanted to retain all of the OEM features to make it seem like the car came like this from Subaru. So it's not even like the, the EG33 isn't even interfering with anything right now. It's not even interfering with absolutely anything. All the wiring I'm dealing with is for a stock VA chassis Subaru. And for some reason, it's still just not working. And I, it, I'm starting to lean towards the idea that maybe because this is a 2016 harness and not a 2017 harness because there are those changes that I found between a couple connectors, the SRS module and things like that, that that may be causing more problems as well. I don't know. So I'm going to go hop on the computer, see how much a brand new bulkhead harness costs from Subaru. I have a feeling it's going to be stupid expensive, which is going to push this out a couple weeks. Um, I can't keep throwing money at harnesses and harnesses and harnesses. So I think uh, best route here is to save up a little bit, buy a brand new bulkhead harness from Subaru, swap that in, fix the issues, get the Haltech wired in, keep going forward. I don't want to put everything on a switch panel and just completely derail the entire reason I'm building this car, or the, the entire reasons that I'm building this car. Like people have done these swaps before in older chassis because older chassis don't have the difficulty of the CAN bus system and it's a lot easier to get everything like working. So I don't know. I mean, maybe worst case scenario, we take it out of this car and we put it in a different car. I'm just joking, we're not doing that. The fab work wouldn't line up. So I don't know. I think that's where I'm going to stop this video at least. I'm probably going to play with this a little bit more this afternoon, but that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you liked the video, if you want to see me light the car on fire, push off a cliff, go ahead, hit that like button, turn it whatever color it turns. I'm just joking. We'll get the issues figured out at some point. I hope. I'm getting tired of wiring. Um, it's been three days. Three days putting this new bulkhead harness in to fucking waste three days. But anyways, like I said, if you guys want to subscribe, I'm not going to tell you to do it. You know what to do if you want to. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out homies.